What's going on, Paisanos? V here. Come at you guys. Well, we're doing a marker watch today. Paisanos, I gotta tell you, everyone is really getting set and focused on Genesis Impact. I mean, the market already has pre-orders up on it, and everyone's for the most part talking about what they like out of it. Do you like the Evil Twins? Do you like Dryden? Do you like Magisus, which is for collector's rares? But one thing we're also seeing is the community like talk about what they want out of the set, and how much they are disappointed from this set at the same time. It's not like looking at Maximum Crisis, in which everyone was excited, and then the market went... Pfft. It wasn't like Phantom Rage, in which the same thing happened. No, 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 no. Just as Impact, the player base is like, I like Drytons, but this set is hot garbage. It's the most weirdest thing ever looking at um, the market and looking at the cards in this uh, as like a per set basis. Guys, if you're new to the channel, please make sure to subscribe button, like button, and comment down below. Comment question of the day. What do you want out of Justice Impact? And do you really do think it's a bad set? Because me personally, I, I don't want to say it's a bad set. Because realistically, I don't know how good Drydens and matches are going to be. Maybe even Evil Twins might catch us off guard. I really have zero idea. I'm a big fan of Drydens. I'm, I'm probably looking to pick, be picking them up soon. But ultimately, I don't know, like... The extent of how good this can be. We don't know how it's going to be right now. We don't know how it's good, good going to be when, within two weeks when we get our banners. We have no idea. One thing we do know is that the collector's rares are just an impact. They're not as good as the previous collector's rares in Toon Chaos. I think that can heavily impact the set. Look at the pre-order prices right now. Um, we have two um, evil twins up or live twins, we want to call them, uh, up here for collector's rares. And of course, the prices are insanely inflated. Each one holding roughly around a $275 market price, and they're both down to $230. If you want the evil twins or the live twins or whatever they're called, just wait. If you want any collector's rare, just wait. Wait, wait until release day, and more than likely you'll see a drastic decrease in price point from the pre-order pre prices that are going to be available now to tomorrow, the next day, uh, up until the release day. If you're in North America, I think they moved the release day back on Justice Impact um, to December 18th or 17th, something, something like that. But uh, nevertheless, we'll still see this uh, these prices start going down as opposed to them going up. And it's weird, if that has to be the case, uh, we, we actually might see Justice Impact prices I mean, debut on TG player at an all-time low from a relatively new uh, sub-core set. So that's something really interesting to look at. Red Eyes Black uh, Dragon is actually relatively inexpensive right now. The card coming at a maximum gold uh, with the roughly around $5 price point is kind of cheap. When you look at the other cards like Dark Magician and Blue Eyes Dragon, they're worth a good amount of money. But looking at Red Eyes Black Dragon, it's really not. And I really don't know why, to be honest with you. Um, because there's more copies of Dark Magician and Blue Eyes Dragon. I'm thinking the collectors haven't realized the fact that there is a third card in here for collecting. And I think we will see in time, uh, this Red Eyes Black Dragon start going up in value due to that. That's why we're seeing Blue Eyes Dragon. And that's why we're seeing Dark Magician. We're not seeing like these cards go up in value because someone's going, Oh yeah, I'll build a Blue Eyes Dark Magician deck. And thank God we have Maximum Go to do it. It's just not going to happen like that, Paisanos. All right, I'm next. Sable Vault, coming out of Shining Darkness, is a solo print secret rare. The cards are marked price roughly around $4. But when we look at over here, a uh, light play first edition is, with shipping is barely under that. Listen, I don't know if this is going to be a good card. I have zero idea. But what I do know is when I'm looking at a solo print secret rare, uh, um, and a Shining Darkness, an old, relatively old set, is not a bad buy to go in and grab this card. And there's not like there's a ton of these available. There's only three pages on TCG Player, and there's not many walls of this card. So I think something that nobody's really looking at right now, once again, it's a secret rare. I love the artwork in this card. Hopefully we'll see more support for Sabres. Maybe they'll become meta. Who knows? But this card is really old, and I don't know. Something that you might want to consider picking up if you're looking to finish your X-Saber core. We also have Cash Dragon Levineer, a card at Ultima Rare at OTS Smart Pack 12. With a $49 market price, the value actually is insanely low. It's anywhere between $43 and $44 for Cash Dragon Levineer. I'm telling you right now, I've been saying it nonstop. The card originally, I think when it was like $38, spiked up to like $50, and now this is the price it's at right now. I'm going to be straight up with you. I'm still holding my copies of this card. This card is a great card to sell, but not right now. The meta doesn't call for it to be sold right now. It's a broken card, but the meta doesn't need it, so it's not going to see as much value. Yeah, it sees value in Dragon Link, but as a one of. I think this card is going to be insanely broken in the future of this game. And the ultimate rare, uh, Cash Dragon 11 here, is definitely the version I think you should pick up. If you don't want to pick up, pick up this version, you can always go ahead and grab the Secret Rare, which is also a really good card. 
We also have Overwhelm at a Raging Battle. So in case you guys don't know what this does, it's a counter trap. Uh, activate when you control uh, face up level 7 a higher monster that was tribute summoned, negate the effect of a trap or um, uh, effect monsters uh, effect monster card. It, it, used to be, it doesn't say effect monster effect nowadays, anyway. Um, and destroy it. It's a counter trap. I think this is another great underrated card. Once again, secret rare only printing at a raging battle. The value of this card unlimited, well, it's roughly around 350. If you want a first version of the card, uh, you'll probably just go load. <laughs> Uh, you're probably be paying more. This is Spanish version, actually, right over there. That's roughly around 539 for the light you played first edition of Overwhelm. Once again, a phenomenal card nobody's looking at right now. Came out of Raging Battle. Secret Rare. Definitely a great card to pick up. One of my favorite cards I used to always talk about is Overdrive Teleporter. I not stop talking about how much I love this card and how much I think um, this card is super undervalued. Solo Print, Secret Rare, at a crossroads of impact. With a twelve dollar market price, the value of the card right now for Lightly Play Unlimited is roughly around twelve dollars. But if you want a first edition version of the card, it starts at thirty two dollars, thirty two dollar price point for the card. Then it quickly goes up to about thirty five to thirty six dollars for Secret Rare Overdrive Teleporter. It doesn't matter whether or not people think this is a good card now or it isn't. It doesn't matter unless this card gets a reprint at like Prismatic Secret or Starlight or anything crazy high like that. The the original Secret Rare version of Overdrive Teleporter is gonna hold good value. And that's what we're seeing here. Some might go well be. It could be because of, I don't know, Virtual World or whatever. Yeah, I guess so. But it really doesn't matter because Hype will drive the price up and you would, you would have to bank on all those players who bought into the Hype to now turn around and sell into the Hype. They're not going to sell into the Hype and lose money. More than likely, they're going to hold these cards and wait till the next Hype train goes up. And the price goes higher and higher and higher and higher. We saw something like this happen with Ultra Christia. And this is why I'm not, I'm not shocked that Overdrive Teleporter has this kind of crazy high value. It's only going to get higher. Then we have Potted Zai's Ultimate Rare at an OTS Storm Pack 11 with a $97 market price. Look at this. You got some Japanese Korean versions for some ungodly reason. The first listings being roughly around $89. After a couple of sales, and I really mean a couple of sales, the value is almost near $100 for Ultimate Rare Potted Zai's. Now, once again, I said it before, I'll say it again. Ultimate Rare Potted Zai's is definitely better um, than Cigarette Potted Zai's. I mean, I'm not, I'm sorry. Ultimate Rare Pot Desires is definitely better than the Collector's Rare Pot Desires. And, I, 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 and I've always said this, if you guys check out my live streams, not, click the description down below, I stream on Twitch, uh, Twitch, uh, YGO Paisan, once again, in the description down below. Um, and the reason is because, from a distance, your Collector's Rare looks like an Ultra Rare. From a distance, my Ultimate Rare still looks like an Ultimate Rare. If you're lucky, if you're holding Collector's Rares, so am I mistaken if for a Collector's, um, for an Ultimate Rare, but more than likely they're not going to. And this is what I mean by with a lot of these Collector's Rare cards. Don't get me wrong, cards like Siphon Gamma, Collector's Rare, it is a really good card. It is the best version of that. But if they came out with an Ultimate Rare at Siphon Gamma, that would be the best rarity. That would be the hardest to get rarity. And more than likely that would be the most expensive card. Look at the Collector's Rares coming out of Genesis Impact. I don't hate them. It's just that they're, they're not broad enough to really earn the title collector's rare but it has to do with them not being realistically collectible cards uh as in like dark magician blister dragon like that should be collectors rare so that should have been put in this set nevertheless though moving forward we have emergency teleport coming at dual chance this is the ultimate rare with a 46 dollar market price well yeah like you play on limits are roughly around 45 to 46 dollars sure but if you want a first version of this card you're looking to pay eh I think it's a, a little over a hundred, right? Yeah, a hundred and nine dollars, one hundred and ten dollars realistically. After that one sold, it's a hundred and twenty dollars. Couple of listings over here of Ultimate Rare Emergency Teleport. Listen, I still think the ult unlimited versions is good to get. I will say that because the reason why is, and it's very easy to see this, is when you have a hundred and twenty and forty five dollars, what's gonna sell the fastest? As the unlimited sells, the price rises for the unlimited. Whereas the first editions, it's really rare for someone to go in and buy this. Would they still do it? Of course. Would it still sell? Yes, it will. But not to the degree of the unlimited. So this is why I say in this situation, it's better to buy the unlimited e tellies because they're the version of the card that is still going to be going high in value. Could the could Konami take e tally and put it to two on the ban list? Sure, I guess so. They shouldn't. I'd be really bad they did. But it's Konami. Anything can happen to Banless, that's why we love them and hate them. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised to see that happen. As many as I, I wouldn't be surprised to see a lot of other cards on this Banless come on and off it. Venny is being Ultima Rare at an OTS Hornet Pack 1 with a near 39, almost near $40 market price. Well, 
it's actually down to about 35 36 dollars this is a phenomenal car and i think in every meta especially the meta hits a certain like a certain line this card starts seeing meta play it started seeing meta play sporadically not too long ago and i do think this card can see meta play again it's a great card ots one pack one it's a second ultimate rare by the way original ultimate rare advantage fiend came out on cyber dark impact and now we're seeing another ultimate rare in ots one pack one both versions are really good and if you don't own either you might want to consider picking them up because time is only ticking on the on the, as far as these cards going higher in the market then we have spell books nothing nothing other than the fact that i really want i kind of want ultimate rare spell books and i don't i'm not sure if i'm alone in this comment down below if you are paisano but i feel like spell books is a thing i want <laughs> i already own spell books don't get me wrong but like max rarity spell books it's like yeah we all own a car but do you own a corvette no you, you, you don't but you want to don't you that's how i feel like with spell books i kind of just want the max rarity i kind of want a lot of things max rarity uh but for a deck core specifically spell books would just look max rarity you, you take it out every now and then. You don't even need to play against anybody. It's solitary deck. You just do a couple of little plays. You go, ah, that feels good. And then you put it back in your deck box. Nice clean sleeves. Nice deck box. And then you put it away and you're like, that felt good. Does anyone else do that with like certain deck cores? And if you do, let me know what deck core you do it with. I really like doing that with spell books. Uh, look at that grand spell book tower secret rare at a abyss rising with a nine dollar market price. The value of unlimited are hitting hitting near ten dollars. And the first edition version of these cards, by the way, they're slowly diminishing off the market. Starts at eleven dollars for the secret rare. You need about two of these. Um, spell book secrets though. Whew, this card is crazy money and still hasn't calmed down from when it was initially bought out when Spellbook Knowledge came out. Spellbook of Secrets, Ultima, uh, Ultimate Rare, out of Return of the Duelist, um, with a $41 market price, you get the limits for roughly around, hold on a second, limits roughly around $38. All right, that's not bad for unlimiteds. But if you're buying Ultimate Rare Spellbook, Spellbook of uh, Secrets, you're not buying unlimiteds. Like, you got to go all the way. And if you go all the way, it's going to run you roughly around $60 for um so like secrets ultimate rare is it worth it i definitely think it is i hold up i, I kind of it's hard to say it's not because it looks so beautiful it's one of those very few ultimate rares in this game that when you hold in a sleeve it just it, brand new sleeves man nothing looks more clean in my to me than anything than the ultimate rare book secrets there's other exceptions like you know like like El Chiral contract ultimate rare. like there's certain ultis that you look at when it's, you get like a nice clean sleeve and you're like it just feels good to be me right now uh, then we have Shooting Star Dragon. Nothing really other to say to, about this card besides the crazy high Ghost Rare price point or these uh, Ultra Rare price points. But any price point, even back as the lowest rarity version of the card, which we could argue would be in the Legend Collection 5. These is a Super Rare, which starts at $11. Or the Shooting Star Dragon at a 2010 um, Collector's 10 Secret Rare, which is like $8.50. Shooting Star Dragon, any version of it is worth money. Check your stuff. You probably have it. It's worth money. Probably going to want to sell it. Uh, then we have the Yu-Gi-Oh! Day 2019 Field Center Token House Dragon Maid uh, with an $18 market price. Uh, it's kind of down. I, I mean, sure, it's 14 bucks. The next one's 15, 16, and 23. My thing about this is, <coughs> excuse me. I think Konami's starting to realize that, and, and this feels kind of recent, that they're taking like anime, specifically anime girls. And they're making them into this card game. They're like trying to force it. And I, and I think they kind of started like they played around with it with like Tour Guy and Tour Bus and stuff like that. And then it really pushed hard when we had like Sky Strikers and everyone's like best waifu Sky Strikers. And Konami's like, oh, you like that? And we're like, I mean, the cards are broken. They're like, a little project the anime. And the players are like, I guess so. And they're like, every OTS that we're going to make the ultimate rare Sky Striker monster. And they did. They definitely did. I don't like that they did that, but they definitely did do that. And then we have Dragon Mage, a deck core which for the most part did nothing. But it's worth money. They even have a field center, which is still worth money. It's actually relatively expensive field for a field center. Pretty good value, to be honest with you. That's worth money. And now they're making in just impact the evil twins. Once again, anime waifu kind of thing. Konami, I'll just throw it out there. We don't care about the waifu. Some do, and don't get me wrong. I think it's so good to do anime waifus for this game because there are players that want it. You want to sell what your customers want to buy. Some customers do want to buy the anime waifus. I get that. But the reason why we like Sky Striker so much is because they were broken. <laughs> Sky Striker Engage could be put in like, I, I, I don't know what's the first anime waifu, what's the opposite of that, but that, and we still play those cards because Engage is broken. Ga Dragon Mage was insane um, as an archetype because you literally said, 
I mean, this, I mean, if any archetype in this game is yelling at anime waifu, it's definitely dragon maids. And that's something that Yu Yu Places went nuts for. So I just want to throw it out there. If you do pure anime waifu, like dragon maids, they will go crazy for it. But if you make Sky Strikers, Yu Yu Places not only will go crazy for it, even long after Sky Striker is done, I mean, all the Sky Striker cards are still worth a good amount of money for the higher revenue ones. And not necessarily like in Gate Striker Red because it's like banned or whatever, but I'm talking like the ultimate rares like Agari, Shizuku, Hayate, even Ugly Kaina is still like $14, and so it should not be. Um, but look at the prices of these cards. Even Rose, which is like 13 bucks. Solid Rare, it went as high as 800, it's still 340. And you know right now, and if you, and if you don't know somebody, I will tell you there is somebody out there that owns Max Array Sky Strikers. Do they play it? No. But do they want to play it? Oh man, you put in gates to one. Dudes would be gassing this deck up like that they would take this deck out of its brand new sleeves that they originally put it into and put it into new other brand new sleeves just because they want to flex with the sky strikers and i ain't gonna lie a max rarity deck even though it's anime waifu to me max rarity flexes is always appreciative all right uh so here we had astro pack with an ultimate rare with an 88 dollar market price is roughly around a hundred dollars and diminishing i mean no one's cracking open astro pack one and if you're looking to play into goat and you're looking to get high rarity goats and your build runs Tsukiyumi, which I'm almost majority, a majority of Go decks run it. I don't, I, I play Chaos Goats, but a majority of the Go players run this card. Um, this card quickly goes to $200. And if you do not think Tsukiyumi is going to go to $200, go travel back in time to Yu-Gi-Oh players and talk to them when they, when you, be that guy saying Tsukiyumi is going to be 100 and they'll look at you like you're crazy. But it is. It's definitely going to be $100. And this one I really parallel this with scapegoat. Once again, go for my scapegoats, whatever. But scapegoat is going to be hitting minimal a hundred dollars. The moment we pull away from the OTS Tornado Pack Eight, the more this card is rising in value. With sixty dollars market price, scapegoat currently is roughly around fifty five dollars. It's super low right now. You can place it dumping it back into the market. But like I said, as time goes on, as we pull away from OTS Tornado Pack Eight. Dudes will be looking for a scapegoat ultimate rare, and they're gonna be paying insanely high prices. If you have this card, hold this card. If you don't want to play goat format, still get to hold. This card will hit at least a hundred, if not two hundred dollars. Sukiyumi's about to do it, you know. And, and once again, it's not it's not Sukiyumi format. It's goat format. So I don't really understand the difference of why people would even want to get rid of this card. I'm just gonna tell you right now, this card is going to sell. We also have ultimate ring of destruction from Duelist Pack Kai, but this card's actually insanely low. And ultimate ring of destruction, first edition. Ultimate Ring of Destruction uh, market price is roughly around almost near twenty dollars, and if you want to buy unlimited ultis, they're like sixteen. Not bad. If you want to buy a first edition version of this card, uh, yeah, it's about forty dollars, which once again is still not bad for an Ultimate Rare Ring of Destruction. Some of these might go well. V, this might not be the highest rare because uh, with Ring of Destruction you have the original print rare, which is nowhere near as high, by the way, as a secret rare, or you have the Retro Pack Two a secret rare, and the Retro Pack Two secret rare has a price point of roughly around. $165. So, wouldn't that make this the highest rarity? Um, to the untrained eye, no, we're not. You see, even though Ring Instruction out of Retro Pack 2 is technically the most expensive version, it's only the most expensive version because there's not a lot there to get. And I understand the, the, the decree of people who like high rarity. If it's hard for you to get, I want times three. Ultimate Rare will always be higher than Secret Rare, even in the case of this Retro Pack card. And I do think the Ultimate Rare Ring Destruction, first edition, it's going to get cleaned out eventually. It's inevitable. It's going to be getting cleaned out. The second this becomes harder to get, just as hard, some might argue, as the Retro Pack version, those holding the Retro Pack will more than likely put, take that away. They would sell it or, or put it in their binder in lieu for the higher rarity, which would be Ultimate Rare Ring Destruction. Um, anyway, let's read a common question of the day. Ben says, I don't know how, but you created something with this Paisano thing. Every time I watch a video and you're like, what's up, Paisanos? I'm like, hey, yo, what up, Paisano? <laughs> it's hilarious. Also, I wanted to look up your videos and I forgot what your channel was called. So I looked up Yu-Gi-Oh! Paisano and your channel was the first one, Why Joe Paisano? Brilliant, simply brilliant. Thank you, I really appreciate it. So I just want to say a couple of things about this. Cause I get, I'm getting more and more. So as the channel grows, I get new people that don't understand why I say Paisano. So and I, and I know this by the way, because I read every single one of your comments. I notice as time goes on, and I don't address the Paisano thing. 
I get more questions in my comment section about Paisano. More people going, what's it mean? What's it about? Some people just outright get upset about it. Some people have the wrong definition about it. It's just everything all over the place. And I, and I wait till it gets, I, it's like a cup, and I wait till the cup gets to the point where it's about to spill over, and then I'm going to answer. Once again, like I said, if you guys want to check this out, please go back to all my previous videos. At least one person in the majority of those previous videos is going, what's this Paisano thing about, bro? Let me know. I'm dead serious, by the way. So I wait a while and I wait like I said I wait till I get enough subscribers that are ready to be new And once again if you're new to the channel hit the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed already hit the like button comment down below Share the video and of course make sure to hit the notification bell when I do my live streams Especially the banlish live streams when max C comes to three anyway um so but a little quick thing about Paisano. First of all, it, it's it's multifaceted for me in case you guys don't know I am both Puerto Rican and Italian both say Paisano both of them do they mean relatively the same exact thing? I'm not sure if you understand that or not. Growing up in a household, a family speaking Spanish and Italian, you, they just say it. And, and one thing, whether you're Spanish or Italian, you kind of just get what it means. You, it's, it's relatively easy and simple. It means brother or brethren. That's basically what it means, okay? Just want to throw it out there in case anyone's like, kind of confused about that. That's number one. Uh, number two, when, uh, years ago, I'm talking years ago, my little kids, when they were really younger, uh, they used to watch the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. And I love that show. I used to watch it when I was a kid. And we put the DVDs on them. They watched it. And they love it. And I was watching it the night before one night. <clears throat> and what had happened was, uh, you know, my fell asleep, my son, and woke, woke up the next day, uh, sat down, hit the record button, looked in the camera. And I, and I remember at the beginning of Super Mario Super Show, if you guys ever watch it, the first thing they say is, hey, Bizonos, it's a Super Mario Brothers Super Show. So me just going into autopilot mode when I do my videos because I use one taken, unscripted. I go, what's going on, Bizonos V here? And the comment just blew up. Everyone went nuts. They loved it. And then the next day, because I, I, I even though I read those comment sections, I was like, cool, I'll just continue to do the marker watches. I said, hey, everybody, V here. And the comment section just blew up against me. They're like, bro, I will unsubscribe if you do not call me Paisano. And then we had times where people would just get upset because Paisano and the actual definition means like, uh, uh, first of all, it means countrymen, uh, is the actual definition. And then the second definition means like peasants. So I would joke around, and every now and then you might hear me call, say peasant, and some people get upset about it because obviously they're not subscribed to the channel or they're relatively new to the channel. So they'll get upset about that. They're like, I'm not a peasant, V. To hell with you, bro. I was like, dude, it's, it's not, whatever, man. Um, but when I say Paisano, I really mean brethren. I mean, I mean all those Yu-Gi-Oh players. And and when I and when we met that word is we're all in this together. Whether we care about a collection, whether we care about trading, whether we care about casual decks, we are all in this together. The market is only there because of Paisanos. And Paisanos, by the way, are worldwide. I've been to regionals been patented back by uh, fellow Yu-Gi-Oh players the whole table by the way yelling what's going on Paisano I mean everyone I've been to a YCS where people in black shirts tapping in the back what's going on Paisano where judges were like just walking past and I'm not saying nothing I'm a relatively quiet guy at Yu-Gi-Oh events they could just, go, they just walk in my ear and they go what up Paisano and they just walk away like everyone it's like kind of like if you haven't seen the movie Fight Club Treat Yourself it's a phenomenal movie it's that movie where we are everywhere but we don't brag about what we are we just do what we do we just play Yu-Gi-Oh, collect the cards trade the cards sell the cards buy the cards that's what we are and that's what paisanos are and it's a great feeling the minute you realize it the minute you realize anywhere you go anywhere you go right now you see another fellow paisano anywhere it doesn't, it doesn't matter dentist's office doctor's office uh, uh, uh let's say you somehow you got locked up and there's another paisano in jail you're gonna be talking about Yu-Gi-Oh, and everything else that's wherever means almost nothing because a lot of the game is always better than that anyway paisanos i really appreciate you guys watching my videos please make sure to hit the subscribe button hit the like button comment down below it's your boy v and you paisanos have a great day